Welcome back, everyone, to The Deep Dive. Yeah, glad to be back. This week, we're going to be uh, taking a look at some really uh, interesting research about DNA. Okay. And uh, quantum mechanics. So this should be fun. It is an interesting uh, intersection, yeah. Yeah, and you've provided me with some uh, really fascinating articles on uh, mm -hmm. quantum entanglement and uh, and how it... Uh, might be involved well, with the, how DNA is structured and functions. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, people have heard of quantum entanglement probably mostly as okay. like a kind of a theoretical physics problem. Yeah, something out of uh, Star Trek or something. Yeah, right. It's sort of a spooky action at a distance, as Einstein called it. Right, right. But it's actually been proven. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, demonstrated in the lab that right. this, uh, this entanglement really occurs. But the idea that it could also be occurring in biological systems yeah. is kind of a new one. And that's what's so interesting about some of this recent research. Well, in one of the articles you sent, The Quantum Dance of Life, starts by asking, how can living organisms... <laughs> be so incredibly efficient and mm -hmm. coordinated. Right. And and that's something that's always puzzled me because it's like, yes, there's some sort of secret communication going on. Like, how do all of the cells in our body know what to do exactly. and when to do it? Yeah. You know, it's like a symphony orchestra. Uh -huh. But who's the conductor? Yeah. yeah. And it's faster than any kind of chemical signaling that we know of. Exactly. So that's one of the things that makes people think, well, maybe it's something more than just the chemistry. Maybe there's some quantum process going on. So is that where quantum entanglement comes in? Well, it could be. The idea is that you've got yeah. these particles, maybe even in DNA, that are linked in a way mm. that if one changes, the other one changes instantaneously, no matter how far apart they are. Okay. So can you break that down for me a little? I mean, how could something like that actually be happening within DNA? Well, you know, DNA has that famous double helix structure, yeah. and some scientists believe that the way it's structured with these base pairs yeah. could create an environment where quantum effects could actually be preserved long enough oh. to be important in biological processes. And one of those effects is something called quantum coherence. Quantum coherence, yeah. What is that? Well, it's sort of like... Instead of the individual particles acting independently, they're all acting together in a unified way, Ooh. a unified quantum state. So it's like they're all part of this big interconnected web. Yeah, you could think of it that way. And this isn't just theory. There was a study back in 2017 mm -hmm. that showed evidence of quantum coherence lasting much longer than expected in biological systems. Specifically, they looked at photosynthesis. Oh, wow. The process plants used to convert light into energy. Okay, so this is actually happening. Right. It's not science fiction. So then how does quantum entanglement specifically play into this? Well, if you've got these entangled particles in DNA, yeah. then you could imagine that information could be transferred almost instantaneously mm -hmm. between different parts of a cell or even between different cells. Okay, so like the cells are talking to each other using quantum entanglement. Potentially, yes. Wow. And that could explain some of the incredible efficiency and coordination we see in biological processes, mm. like how genes are expressed in a synchronized way or the speed of enzymatic reactions. Yeah, it's mind-blowing when you think about it. It is. I mean, it's like, are we all just connected at some fundamental level? Well, that's a really interesting question, isn't it? It is. And this kind of leads me to another question. Yeah. What are the practical implications of all this? Like, how could this knowledge be used in, say, medicine? Yeah, absolutely. One of the articles you sent, Quantum Leaps in Medicine, talks about right. how this research could lead to incredible breakthroughs. For example, quantum-based imaging techniques could be used to detect diseases at a much earlier stage, hmm. even before any symptoms appear, and maybe even down to the level of individual molecules. That would be amazing. Yeah. And then there's the potential for targeted drug delivery systems well, that it. could use entanglement to deliver medicine directly to the cells that need it. Oh, wow. With minimal side effects. So it's like instead of using a shotgun approach, we're using a laser. Exactly. And that could revolutionize how we treat diseases. That's incredible. So it sounds like we're really on the cusp of a quantum revolution in biology and medicine. It does feel that way. So what does this mean for the average person? Well, for one, it means that we need to start thinking about life and health in a completely new way. Mm. We can't just rely on our old classical understanding of biology anymore. We need to incorporate this new knowledge about quantum mechanics right. and how it plays a role in living systems. This deep dive has been truly eye-opening. It's really changed the way I think about life and the interconnectedness of everything. Yeah, it is amazing to think about. 
But it also raises a lot of new questions. Like if quantum mechanics is at play within us, does that blur the line between the observer and the observed? Are we not just studying life but participating in it in a fundamentally quantum way? It really makes you wonder what other mysteries are out there waiting to be discovered. So for you listening, as you continue your own exploration of this fascinating field, here's a final thought to ponder. If quantum phenomena are at play within us, does that suggest that consciousness itself might be a quantum phenomenon? Until next time, keep diving deep.